similar to Up, the movie, or the Pixar movie, in that it's centered around an old man learning to cope with the death of his wife, and how so much of his life and his identity was with his wife, and so when she passed away, you know, he's struggling to, you know, figure out what to do next. Um, it's very... It's like lighthearted, but it's also very dark. Um, I can read you a bit of the back. At first sight, Ove is almost certainly the grumpiest man you will ever meet. A curmudgeon with staunch principles, strict routines, and a short fuse. People think him better, and he thinks himself surrounded by idiots. Ove's well ordered solitary world gets a shake-up one November morning with the appearance of new neighbors, a chatty young couple, and their two boisterous daughters who announce their arrival by accidentally flattening Ove's mailbox with their U-Haul. I think the, like, dark humor is very Swedish. That's the vibe I got anyways. Um, but yeah, it was it was decently funny. It had a lot of like very cute and heartwarming moments. And I would recommend it. I did expect to like it a little bit more than I actually did. Because I don't feel like I actually like gained anything too deep out of it besides kind of thinking about, you know, getting older and what you want your life to look like when you're retired and things like that. And you know, I guess you kind of learn that relationships and friendships are one of the most, if not the most important part of life. So that's kind of a theme of this. Yeah, but I liked it. I would equ equate it to a really good movie. Once you read it, or if you read it, you might know what I'm talking about.
there were a couple scenes that I was just like, I don't think he needed to include that, and I think, like, this aspect of the story wasn't necessary, it was just, like, weird. If you've read this book, or even if you've read books by this author, I've heard he does, he repeats a lot of tropes in his books. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I talked about it in that last video, which I'll like link up here. But I will say that his writing is very straightforward, but still really beautiful at the same time. Um, if you don't like detailed writing, you might not like this. Like, he has several he has many moments where he describes every small detail of, like, a character's mourning or what they're eating, and for me, that's really interesting, and I love, especially when it takes place in another culture, because this takes place in Japan, all those little details are really interesting to me, like, what he eats and how his day goes and things like that. I'm also a big fan of Lord of the Rings, and a lot of other people don't like Lord of the Rings, the books, because Tolkien loves giving a lot of details about what the characters are wearing and eating and doing, and even like small details. And I love that, and a lot of people don't, so this is kind of like that, but not as flowery as Tolkien a lot more straightforward. But I liked his writing enough that I want to read, like, IQ 84, I think, by him. So, I'm gonna do that. I recommend this book if you're interested in Japanese culture, in, um, like, time weirdness and time travel, kind of. Like surreal literature, if you're interested in that. Um, it was really good. I liked it a lot. I actually liked it a lot more than my partner, who also read the book with me. Um, he didn't really like it, and I think I liked it a lot more than him, so I could see this being a book that divides people. This is another book from my book haul video that I read. I did read some other ones, but I didn't want to talk about all of them, because I don't want to say a bunch of the same stuff, so I just picked a couple. But this is Kindred. 
psilocybin or mushrooms and LSD. And it is written by somebody who is not like a big hippie. And it's written by um, like an atheist researcher, like very like skeptical at first of, he's just extremely down to earth. He's not like talking about these drugs as if they're the, I don't even know how to say what I'm trying to say, but he keeps a very scientific view of it the entire time, and I really like his writing. A brilliant, brave, and personal investigation into the medical and scientific revolution taking place around psychedelic drugs. So the main premise of this book is the promise of using LSD and psilocybin as a pharmaceutical drug, not as a recreational drug. So he does talk about recreational use a little bit, but his main focus is how promising taking guided trips with a therapist on high doses of these drugs, how promising it is for anxiety, depression, PTSD, addiction. There was a lot of research around these drugs happening in, I believe, either the 50s or the 60s, and they were showing these extremely good results in these clinical studies. And then the hippie movement happened, um, and then the book talks about it, but basically those drugs, all pharmaceutical research was shut off and they got put, they got labeled as Schedule 1 drugs. And what a Schedule 1 drug is, is a highly addictive and highly dangerous drug, which the books talks about that, but psilocybin and LSD are not those. Um, like, you can't overdose, like, I don't want to say anything too wrong because I'm not encouraging people to try these drugs. I want to make that extremely clear. The book says that it is to be used in a clinical setting and in a pharmaceutical way, not recreational. So let me preface with that, but I don't believe these drugs should be Schedule 1, um, and a lot of people don't. When given to animals, um, the animal does not choose to take it again. So it's not highly addictive, um, and overdosing, I think, is pretty much impossible. You can definitely have a bad trip, and if you have a history of, like, schizophrenia, you should not, in your family, you should not try these drugs, but... I realize this is a sensitive topic, like, drug usage is sensitive, so I want to try to present it tastefully like he does. I highly recommend you read it. I definitely had the association that shrooms were just something you took um, to have like a, a trip, like a fun recreational like party drug. Um, I didn't know it had so much potential for medicinal use. So I, I think it's really, really interesting.
things interesting. 